Welcome back to the jointhetrades.com interview series where we talk to tradespeople and learn more about successful career paths straight from the source. Today I've got with me Robert Busby, an airline pilot with 19 years of experience in the trade. Hey Rob, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks Fantastic. for joining us. Yeah, well, the least I can do, man. The pleasure is all on this side of the uh, iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I was uh, running a little late, but I just flew in and, boy, are my arms tired, right? Yeah. Is, that the, <laughs> is that the... Yeah, next time, flap a little faster next time. We'll see if we can get you an on-time arrival, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. I'll trust your expertise for sure. So uh, you're an airline pilot. This is incredibly cool to have you here with us. I am, yeah, man. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a decent job. I don't mind it. You know, if there's a way to pay the bills, this is certainly one of them. So uh, it works for me. Yeah, we all got to do that, and this That's is right. a cool way to do it. Mm -hmm. How'd you get started? Uh, I say, man, I say a long, long, long time ago. You know, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, so ever since I was five years old. So I, I grew up in a podunk town up in Massachusetts. If you're familiar in the area there, just outside of Worcester, it's about an hour west of Boston. Anyway, just small, small town. You know, and none of my family is in the trade. None of my family uh, does the business or any friends of mine. That's it. So all I did was actually go to my high school guidance counselor, and I said, hey, I want to be an airline pilot. What do I need to do? And that was it. The ball was rolling from that from that point on. I did exactly what he said, and uh, – and that was it, man. It took off. So this is since you were five years old that you were you were That's determined. It, yeah. Since I was five years old, you know, Daddy lost his job down in Houston, Texas. He got another job in Massachusetts. You know, he rounded up the family, threw him on a Continental Airlines flight from uh, Houston to Newark, I think, right, to connect. And then yeah. uh, the pilot said, hey, come up to the cockpit. I'll give you some wings. I'll let you push some buttons. And that was it, man. I looked at my mom. I was like, hey, I want to be an airline pilot. <laughs> I was the it's like, yeah, kid, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Yeah, like we, we wish we had that uh, pilot's name right now and phone number. We call him up and <laughs> that's right. Um, like, you, you honestly, you a referral fee. I don't know. Right? Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah you got to chip him in. That's right. All right. So it's been um, 19 years of experience. A long time. When you got started, how, how do you how do you get started? in this career man there's there are so many different ways to get started in the aviation industry you know there's one way you know a lot of people think military you know and back and back back in the day you know the most the majority of airline pilots came from the military that's where they all began but nowadays and yeah. in, in my era I'm, I'm all from civilian you know i you go out there you jump in a cessna 172 or a cessna 150 and boom you get your instruction you're instructing your you're risking your life every day and i'm just kidding you're not risking your life it's 100 percent <laughs> <We safe>. are <laughs> but no, but the uh, but yeah. So there's a military route that way. Then there's other routes, of course. Like I took, you know, I went to. I went, there, there's so many schools and so many programs that they have out there right now. Is that? Um, and I went to school. Where I was like, hey, you know what? You want to be an airline pilot? Sure. Well, there's an aviation school down in Florida. Go down there, and it all started. And it all started from there. They throw you in a 172. Say, all right, today's lesson is going to be rolling down a runway and pull up. And that was it. First thing I learned was how to take off. So yeah, wow. that, that's that's one way of doing it. And then if like if you're not if you're not um, if you're not sure, you know, it's like, hey, wait a minute, that's I hear it's a lot of money to get started. You know, and you're not sure, you don't want to jump in, you know, sign a, a $40,000 uh, student loan or something like that real quick, or you don't want to give your money away real quick. So what you do is you right. do something around the lines, like so they call it a discovery flight. And you can go to your local, a, a local airport, any kind of airport that's anywhere near you. They usually have these little outfits with a Cessna and says, hey, you want to do a discovery flight for 60, 70 bucks? They'll throw you in an airplane, take you up in the air, let you do a couple of turns. And hey, if it knocks your socks off, well, you're meant to do the business. If it doesn't, well, you know, you're puking all over yourself. Well, then you know it's not for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if you reach for the, uh, what, I suppose the uh, the vomit bag, you know that's a bad sign, right? That's right. Yeah. It's probably not, it's probably not your trade, uh, your trade of choice. That's for sure. <laughs> For sure. So that's how you got yeah. rolling. And then uh, you, where'd you go from there? You start working for a specific company or you? you are yeah, you, man. You... So I was down. So I went to went to Florida, went to school down there and I uh, did all my flight lessons down there. And you you, you get you can get all your ticket, you know, your tickets, your private pilot, your instrument, commercial ratings. There's a few ratings you need to get to uh, to get to the level that I'm at for sure. But once you get all your tickets and ratings, you only have a few hundred hours. And that's just okay. no that's just nowhere the experience of what you need to jump into an airline or jet flying, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people across the pond. So your next thing is like, well, how am I gonna go build time? Well, some people go and they drag, you know, they you're on a beach and you see those little tail draggers say, eat at Joe's, eat at Joe's, eat at Joe's right. sitting there, right? Of yeah. Yeah, so some guy, that's that's some guy like myself building time. He's flying like at 60 miles per hour, barely staying in the air, building time. Or he's flying around some cargo, or he's actually flight instructing. That's what I did. So as soon as I got all my hours and my licenses, 
I actually started teaching kids how to fly. And I say kids, but a lot of people are older than I was. But teaching kids how to fly, instructing people, and that's how I built my hours. And at the time, it was 1,500 hours to uh, for the airlines to even look at you. So that's why when I went right into flight instructing. Then after flight instructing, then your regional airlines. Some of y'all might have been on some of those. You know, it's a 50-seater jet, two-by-two two seats. You know, yeah. you fly kind of like uh, – to, you know, you fly from like you know, Charlotte to maybe like Fayetteville, North Carolina, you know, something like a short hop like that. Yeah. That was me back when I was 24 years old, you know, flying those short, those short. Um, and I did that for about 10 years. And then finally, one of the big boys, they finally knocked on my door, said, hey, come join, come fly with us. And now I've been doing that for now. That's how I've been doing now. Wow, man, that's super cool. We, I mean, as a layperson, you have no idea how that really plays out, right? So 1,500 true. hours at that point, just to get rolling. That's super fascinating that everyone's you just got to put in time one way or the other like either that's such a funny thing because we've all seen those of course we've all seen the banners being pulled and you think like oh that's something you don't realize like nah it's just some kid who's building up his that's hours exactly, so can, yeah that's exactly right it's a kid that's a kid that's, that's, that's burning up in there because you're still close to the ocean right so it's not cool upstairs he doesn't have ac He's sitting up there. He's, he's sweating. He's drinking his water bottle. And he's just trying to fly that little thing. And as the fuel gauge gets low, he has to hurry up and, t- and hightail it, drop the drag or land, refuel, then jump back in the air until he can't stand it no more. All to build hours so he can come join me on the right seat. Wow, that is fascinating, man. That's a trip. So you've been doing it long enough to have all kinds of ups and downs, I'm sure. No puns intended. And uh, what, what do you find like most rewarding about it? Most rewarding, yeah. So most rewarding is like it, it's it's just flying the passengers. You know, it's all about having all those people, all those people back there. And a lot of people think, do you freak out when you're when you're when you when you know that you have all those people that you're flying? And you really never think about it. You know, when the door closes and things are happening fast, you're getting your papers, you're getting your, you're dotting your you're dotting your eyes, you're crossing your t's, and you're pushing back, and you really don't really think about it. But back there, but back there, and if, if you do see think about it, you know, you fly, you get the you get the airplane, you. You fight the traffic in New York, you know, LaGuardia. You, you're, you're number 22 for takeoff. You're waiting, waiting, waiting. And then you finally take off. You do the turns to get out of there. And they seek with you and all these other airplanes. And you're finally, finally underway to Aruba. Or you're finally underway to San Diego. And you're finally at cruise altitude. The temperature's right. You're seeing a nice sunrise or a sunset. And now you start thinking like, oh, the autopilot's on. I'm relaxing here. Maybe we're eating a little dinner. And then you start thinking about, well, yeah. Wow, there are there's 180 people back here. There's 180 wow. people, and everybody has a story. You have a story right now. I have a story right now. There's 180 stories back there. Got people that are going for job interviews. People are going over for podcast interviews. People are going over uh, that are flying to see a family friend, a girlfriend they sure. met on Tinder, a, uh, <laughs> a, a, a funeral, a job interview, right. or a, all, everybody has a vacation. Or, 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 or you know, there's so many stories back there. And you're a huge part of that. You're, you're just you're just a part of that. And you come in for landing. You grease the landing on. You make you you make it memorable for them. And as you're saying goodbye, you know you see the smiles and you see just that you see all their facial expressions of well the day that they're having. So the rewarding part is you took 180 people to their story. You know you're you're assisting them create uh, you know, finishing up their story or or adding to their story. So that's what I find the most rewarding part about it. But a lot of people, you know, they choose to fly for airlines like FedEx, UPS, and they don't want to fly passengers. Their reward is they want to fly those boxes and their reward is their paycheck. You know what I mean? So everybody, sure. there's a lot of different flavors when it comes to aviation industry and then, uh, being an airline pilot. You don't necessarily have to fly passengers. You can go fly boxes over to Asia. And, uh, and, and a lot of people like doing that, too. So there's, a, there's all kinds of good options for it. Yeah, there's all very seals. There's all kinds right, of crazy right, options right. for people, for pilots. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, guide us through a day. At this point in your career, you get up, you're working how many hours a week, you're doing how many flights a week, that kind of thing. Yeah, so right now I live down I live down in the southeast, right? But the great thing about being uh, the airline that I work for in any airline, the passenger service, is that uh, you know, we're allowed, you can, you can live anywhere in the world. I'm actually cool. based in New York, but I live down in the southeast of, of, of the states, you know, so I don't actually start work until I actually get to New York. And the good thing about uh, the airline pilots, we all have a deal with all the airlines. Uh, other pilots, say, from Southwest can fly on American absolutely for free. 
me, I can go jump on an American Airlines flight. I can jump on a Delta flight. I can jump on a Southwest flight all for free because you just wow. have a little badge. You say, hey, I'd like a ride, please, to New York because my airline's full or something around those lines. Or I just want to do a little vacation by myself. You know what I mean? So if there's a seat available, it's kind of like a little gentleman's handshake. If there's a seat available, it's all yours free of charge. So I'll jump on an airline, my, my airline or American, and I'll jump on uh, and I'll fly to New York. So I'll wake up in the morning. You know, I'll wake up in the morning about 3 in the morning. I'll jump in the car. I'll thank God that I don't have to do, you know, that I don't have to fight traffic like most 9 to 5ers. You know what I mean? It's like there's, there's clear, oh, sure. it's clear runways as soon as I get to the airport. You park at one of those park and go type of thing. You jump in a shuttle like everybody else. You go through security. You get on your airplane. And you get on your airplane and you're the pastor in the back. And I'm commuting. I'm commuting over to you know, New York. I land in New York while well, my showtime, you know, it was a showtime, but usually about an hour prior to your takeoff. And it comes up in a couple hours. So you get something to eat. You grab a coffee. You go to one of the crew rooms or the crew lounges. You take a nap or you, you hang out, watch some TV, watch a football game. You chill with the, with the fellas there maybe or if you're bored of talking about airline stuff. As you go in the pasture, you go up there in the uh, airport, you see all kinds of entertainment. And I don't know if you've seen, seen the news lately, but there's all kinds of entertainment going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, for sure. Not a, not a dull moment. No, it's not a dull moment. So you're sitting there and you're, and you're waiting for, and you're just waiting for your, for your flight to come up. And next thing you know, everything is done. Now, you know, back in the day, it was all done through in the weather rooms. You know, you'd have these big screens all, all in these weather rooms and you'd be, flight planning on the on all this paperwork plotting your courses filing on the phones it was really really busy but now tech, uh, technology is so advanced that it, it's all done in a, in a laptop now so i'm right. sitting there sipping my coffee i'll start getting notifications on the laptop then i start going through the paperwork okay are my passengers going to be safe from a to b does this route look good to me do i have enough gas how's the fuel you know i can even spot out turbulence just sitting down here talking you and i talking right now i'm like oh there's turbulence in this area so i'm going to reroute ourselves around this area or fly at a different altitude you know wow I'm all doing that. yeah we can all do that right now via the ipad and i can talk to my dispatcher say hey we're going to do this instead it might cost a little bit more fuel wise or you get or we'll do a shortcut you can take off some gas so by the time you actually walk to the airplane which was about 45 minutes prior to departure that airplane's already fueled up. That airplane's already ready to go. It's the right tail number. The maintenance is all taken care of. And you just, it's almost like you sign and drive. You get in there, you do your checks, you start, you go through all the buttons and there's about 8,000 buttons to go through. And you go through all your buttons and your switches. And there's two of us to tango. It takes two to tango. But, right. and, 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 and just talking to, like you said, the layman person out there talking is like, oh gosh, that's a lot. But once, you've been, doing it, once you've been doing it this long, you know, I can close my eyes and the, and the hand just goes, you know, just does. The same. <laughs> and it's like your hand stops. Like, well, I'm glad doing? to hear that. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Like, you... That button doesn't feel right. And sure enough, that button might not be in the right place, you know. So you do your flows and your checklist and you, and you talk to your, your co-pilot or your captain, whoever you're flying with there, first officer, should I say. And you get to know each other, you know, because you want to you want to make, make sure you're molding well with the guy next to you so you can kind of wrap together should something bad happen type of deal. But everybody's on the same page, you know. I still from the same book from my airline he studied from the same book of my airline so basically i can say the sky is and he'll say blue you know what i mean we'll both be on that same page gotcha. so as we're doing our checks and we're getting to know each other and we're briefing each other then we start briefing each other you know we're talking about, okay this is how the flight's gonna go do you agree disagree those type of things well then the board then the pastors are getting uh, boarded at the same time you know they're, they're starting to come in they're starting to come in you know yeah and then problems arise you know and you kind of just take you know flight attendants call up say hey we got a pastor back there. He's smoking. Or hey, we got a, a, a duplicate seat. You know, it's just just a typical day in the aviation industry. Or maybe we're not fueled properly. So you kind of got to put out these little fires as the airplane's being boarded. But it's all part of the excitement. You know, it actually just just makes the air just makes the time go by quicker. Then once all the T's are crossed, <laughs> the I's are dotted, everything's ready to go, and you're approaching you're approaching departure time. Then it's like, all right, now I need a. I need to go do some customer service and I call it, you know, selling tickets. I'll go back there in the cabin. I'll walk the entire cabin. I'll hand kids out wings, you know, and I'll, I'll shake them, huh. kiss babies, things like that. Talk to the first class passenger, yeah, talk sure. to the first class, say hi, you know, that type of things. And then you make an announcement, you know, you make an, they talk to the people, you know, and you talk to them one on, like you're talking one on one, you know, there's all that stereotypical pilot stuff out there. Hey folks at Quagmire on, on, uh, you know, on, uh, what was that? Family guy. Uh, yeah, uh, right. You can count the thousand us all the time, and most guys sound like that. Not so much myself, but you talk to your pastors, you brief your pastors. Then once it's all said and done, the gate agent kisses you goodbye, gives you your final paperwork, shuts that door. Then it's go time. Then you have the ramp control saying, "Are you ready to push back?" And there you go. Then it's then it's off to the races, and you'll wow. fly. We'll fly. We'll we'll go out there. We'll taxi out there, and we'll fly. You know, your typical your typical day would be. 
New York to Denver. Then you'll do like a two hour layover there. You might switch airplanes. You might switch uh, flight attendants. And then you'll fly Denver to, you'll get something to eat over there, or you'll fly Denver to, and then you'll fly Denver to Seattle. Okay. And once you're in Seattle, boom, you'll have, you'll have maybe 22 hours in Seattle. And Seattle's a great city. You know, a lot of people dog yeah. it. I happen to like Seattle a lot. Great food, great atmosphere, great people out there. So you get out there. Once you're done, now you're on, well, me time. You know what I mean? So here you're on a me time. Well, there's a shuttle. There's a, either a van or there's a, a, there's a car service waiting your arrival. Well, you, the pilots head on down there. They get in the car service. They bring you down to a very, very nice hotel. You know, we stay at a gorgeous hotel right off of Pike's Market right there. Uh, they bring you to the hotel. They check in. Oh. Your crew, oh, this is you. They already have your rooms already pre. You're already pre-checked in almost. You, know, you just kind of sign your name. Here's nice. your keys. Yeah, you kind of do it to the side. You don't wait in line. Here's your keys because we just. That's just our job. You know, you go in there. You just boom, 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 boom. You get up to the room. You strip <laughs> off your clothes. You either iron it right there. You get out. You get on your other garb there. And then it's now. Now it's time to be me. You know. So some people might lay on the bed and be exhausted. Some people might call the wife. Some people might talk to the kids. Some people might go out there and. uh Enjoy the town. They might go to a local sure. bar, local brewery. Might go and uh, have dinner somewhere by the water out there. And me, my personal favorite is like they have an amazing poke bowl over there. So I'm always going down there for a poke bowl, then a little sushi and sake afterwards as well. So, And then it's nighttime, man. Then you, you go to sleep, and then you uh, kind of like rinse and repeat the next day. You fly Seattle down to San Francisco, two hours sit. Then you go to San Francisco, you fly to Des Moines. And then you sit over there, and you do this, almost the same thing. You have car service, hotel and a lot of people don't like Des Moines. They think it's small and small and quirky. <laughs> but I tell you what, I love Des Moines. There happened to be at this amazing German place that it actually a lot of Germans settled in Des Moines. So this the, the food is out of control. It's like you're in Frankfurt, Munich, or something like that in Des Moines. Nice. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Shout out to Des Moines. That's exactly. Yeah. Shout out to Des Moines. You know. So there's so many. There, there's so many places. <laughs> and you talk about reward. It's like there's so many different places that you would never think to go to, and that you can go all over the place and explore all these said cities. But then it's Very like, cool. all right, do you ever get out of the States? And I do. So like the yeah. next day would be like Des Moines, Houston, Houston, Bogota, Colombia. And then you're flying, you're flying down to South America, you know, and then wow. over there, well, now, now you have a language barrier. So I hope you habla espanol. If not, you hope, you hope you're with somebody. If not, you're just like, you got your Google translate in your phone, you know, like, I want food. And then you put it in your face and you'll say, I want food, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then the, and then the next day is basically you go back to your base. You go back, you back from Bogota over to New York. You check out. You're done. Thank God you didn't bend any aircraft. Well, boom, you don't need to talk. Into, that's like the, another great thing about this job. I never see my boss. You never yeah, see your boss. Right. You, never, you never talk to your boss. You never see your boss. And you can actually go through your whole career never seeing your boss or even having a phone call from your boss as long as yeah, you show up nice. on, yeah as long as you show up on time when you're supposed to show up you don't bend an airplane you're good you go home you don't take the and the way another great thing about this job you don't take the home the work home with you right now i'm sitting here just chit chat with you talking aviation but guess what i'm not thinking about oh man I got this meeting I got to attend, you know, that, that type of thing. Right. I got, I got, I got a got deadline, deadline coming up. I got up. this deadline. All I know is February 6th is my next yeah. flight. So I got some time off in between. So that's, oh, that's, that's my excellent. technical time. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty extraordinary, actually. It gives you a whole lot of freedom. Not to mention, like you said, I mean, you're just counting life experiences every time you go somewhere, I guess. Right. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You, you meet, you meet so many different people. You, um, you know, you meet new people if, if that's your thing, you know, you can, you can be to yourself or, or invite people to come with you, but you can meet so many different people and so many different cultures and so many different uh, places to see that you might not be aware that's out there and you might find some place that, Oh man, I really like this joint. You actually end up a lot of guys uh, and girls, they end up going moving out there out of some of these places. You know, we have pilots that live in yeah. Spain. They live in Spain and they commute to New York do their routes and they fly over to back to Spain. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. incredibly cool that you mentioned that. That's something that we don't consider at all. Just being a lay person, like what, what an opportunity that is. What an, Absolutely. what an opportunity that is that you can basically live anywhere you want in the world for all intents and purposes and still get to work without that much trouble. Right. I assume it's a little bit more You're hassle, than right. overseas, but wow, that's something else. Mm, wow. That's yeah, really we cool. Have, so we You're have two on... guys that live in Australia. Incredible. How has the business changed since you've been in? You've been in long enough, and technology obviously is changing rapidly, even more rapidly, it seems, year to year, huh? Yeah. So the yeah. So the technology is starting to get you know starting to get up there. You know, uh, like a long time ago, whenever whenever I was coming up in the industry, you know, usually there was three there's three pilots sitting in the flight deck. You know, there's three pilots. You had two, you had your captain, you had your first officer sitting facing the front. Then you had an engineer on the right side, kind of 
keeping all right how's the hydraulic levels how's this levels how the navigation okay. coming how's the uh, the fuel levels those type of things but with technology they're able to shrink that down to two pilots you know so that's a huge savings to companies obviously that's not good for supply and demand well that's not good for pilot supply but right now we are very much not a dime a dozen but pilot the pilot uh gig is certainly a hot one right now pilots are definitely uh in the in demand right now if you know what i'm saying uh, so technology wise just what we talked about with the ipads and things around those lines um also it's the um it's the security you know everybody remembers september 11th or for they, so a lot of sure. people weren't even born then but they've heard of it type of deal you know before then is you taxi out you'd have a door open behind you you know people could come up to the cockpit yeah. during during uh, you know during flight hours it's a great time you know so now you can't do that you're behind a steel door you know and anybody no, nobody gets near that whatsoever heck if there's if there's ever in a disturbance back there in the um if there's ever a disturbance back there in the in the cabin back there you know pilots are instructed you just keep that steel door shut locked bolted yeah. you know and there is no that by in any means nobody's supposed to come up there so that's just, just have that in the back of this so that's a unpleasant change that had to happen unfortunately due to uh, events but but that was a change there and then of course it's the uh mm. it's the passengers you know a lot of people are flying these airports are packed a lot of these airports were built you know they, they were built to handle like 90 passenger jets so now they have these these terminals that are that are flying these 180 passenger jets all the time these terminals are packed people are all over each other and you just see you just see a lot of people having a bad day, I call it. Yeah. I don't blame the person. Everybody has a bad day, you know. But when you have yeah. one person has a bad day and another person has a bad day, guess what? Their bad days come up. Yeah. And everybody has a cell phone now. And next thing you know, they're on CNN. They're on Fox News. Yeah. They're on, this, they're on that. And they're on TikTok and aviation. Here we are laughing and watching you know, the type of deal. So when you got two bad days or, and then people mail together, that's it. It's all over. So you get to see a lot more of that. That's for sure. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, we we definitely see a lot just just here on the tube. So and yeah. YouTube, of course. So yeah, yeah. Luckily, you get to close that steel door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a people person. I like to try to solve pro solve problems, but unfortunately, they they tell me to go stand sit behind the door. I'm like, all right, fine, I'll do it, no problem. Do as you're told. You know what I mean? Like they run the ship. They pay. They pay the. Uh, they pay your check. So you do as you're told. Man, it sounds like a such a cool gig. It sounds like such an awesome gig. I mean, I grew up, of course, a, a while ago, and you know, pilots were always like revered and and wow, you know, the pilots. And it always had, at the time when I was a kid, of course, we had that image of the '60s and like you know, the cool image of the pilots during yeah, and, you know, Pan wow, Am, so baby, cool. yeah, right, Pan Am, right. Um, but it's awesome to know that it still just it still has all these you know positive aspects. Now, as far as someone getting into the field. Are, is it difficult to get in the field? Is there a whole lot of competition at this point, or or their airlines are really looking for people? Yeah, so so uh, so the so the industry is kind of like yes, hills and valleys, hills and valleys, hills and valleys. Right now, it's it right now it, it's a what would be the positive? Would it be uphill or would it be downhill? I don't know. Would it be downhill or uphill? With the positive, I'm trying to think. I guess we'll, anyway, we'll call it uphill. Let's just say, let's just say it's it's a great time to be a pilot. I mean, okay. so, yeah, so uh, pilots are in very much high demand right now. A, a lot of these regionals, like I told you about, the 50-seater jets, the 70-seater jets that I flew way before I fly the big jets now, is that these airlines can't staff. A lot of these airlines actually have half their planes parked because there are no pilots that they wow. can hire that have the hours. Right, exactly. So when I started, when I started, my first uh, airline job was in 04. My first paycheck was 500 bucks. My next paycheck was was uh, was 800 bucks. You do the math, 1300 bucks a month was horrible. It just wasn't the way yeah. it is. Now these cats flying the same airplanes, same deal, same because we're we're in we are in demand. These guys are making over 150 thousand their first year, or 100 thousand their wow. first their very first year. 24 years old, 23 years old, you know, young, dumb, and ready to rock. And they're they're coming out yeah. of class, coming out of school. They got their hours and their tickets, and they're jumping in that plane like, here we go, baby. Yeah. You know, so wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the supply, so supply is. I mean, so the demand is on our side right now. So it's out there. Uh, pilots are making a boatload of cash, and you can go pretty much anywhere. And these and these airlines will sponsor you. You know what I mean? So there's ways to go to these places called ATP. They call them pilot factories. You know, because you jump in there, and within six months, you have all your tickets, and you have all you have all your licenses, and now you're instructing for them. And then I flew with I flew with somebody just the other day. They started from zero to hero, and I'll say zero hours all the way to the right seat of a 737 is uh, took them three and a half years, and that is lightning speed. Lightning speed wow. from like right now, if we took you, threw you in a cockpit tomorrow, three and a half years, you'll be flying with me, making wow. 200 plus. 
Yeah. So, so, uh, so it's very, very easy to get in this industry right now. And there's all kinds of, and, and a lot of people think it's very, very expensive. And, it, and at, a, at a point it is expensive. However, a lot of these airlines and there's so many programs out there that are, that are giving, uh, they, they offer signing bonuses, you know, Hey, you come, you come, you go ahead and you're about to start your training with uh, X, Y, Z. Well, guess what? Where if you sign, if you sign the dotted line right now, as soon as you're done with your training, you come fly with us. We're going to give you a sixty thousand dollar bonus. We'll give you a hundred thousand nice. dollar. Well, there's your student loans right there. You know what I mean? Or they'll say, hey, we're going to go ahead and float you fifty grand right now, but you're going to come work for us and you're going to give us a guarantee three years. Well, there's your student loans right there, or a good chunk of them at least. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a nice gig. Yeah, it's not a only good is there a lot right of freedom, now, so yes. but Right now, people are interested, or you know, the next generation are inter interested, ready to rock. Or hell, there's 55 year olds are starting to starting to rock it right now. So, and it's it's definitely a good time if that's what you wanted to do to be a pilot. Incredible. How would you suggest that someone go about that? If we had someone out there right now that's listening to you and was like, "No way," because I'm I'm kind of getting pumped about it. To tell you the truth, <laughs> 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 absolutely. Yeah, not quite 55, but you know, no, no worries, no worries, no worries. So yeah, so I mean. A, if you never if you never gotten sat behind sat behind the controls before you sign any dotted line or you go you do one of those discovery flights and that that's that's mm -hmm. as simple as going to any kind of local airport or you spend the day you go drive to any kind of airport that you can Google discovery flights in my area all, there's all kinds of things that will come up you jump okay. on a discovery flight for sixty bucks they let you mess with the controls you can do a takeoff heck I had brand spanking new students doing landings too their very very first day so you can actually do you wow. can actually go up there and and see if it's see if it's a See if uh, if you while you wet your whistles there, see if it's if it's for you. You know, if it's like, hey man, I really really like this, and also I'm I'm here I'm I'm here I'm seeing dollar signs, and I'm really enjoying what what could be what could be my life in the future. You know, I'm seeing yeah. these flight attendants. You know, oh my goodness, so here we go. Um, so then at that point, then it's like you know you start looking at all right, how do I want to go about it? You know, there's so many different options to do it. Okay. People jump in the military. They they want to go fly an F sixteen for a couple of years. So they go and fly an F sixteen. They get that out of their system. Then they jump in the aviation world. So that's option A. Option B, there's uh, if they want to go to school for it. You know, there's a, there's a college degrees you can get for the for the for the for the airline pilots as well. You know, you got all. You know, there's so many aviation schools out there. You can go out there and get your four year degree as well. So that's for the youngsters or people that want to get and get their degree. With a side note, they get their they get their ticket as well. Or if you're somebody like myself right now, here I am, you know, I'm 42 years old. And if I'm starting fresh right now, I'm like, man, I really want to do this. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and go to a school. One of those, it's an ATP. It's, I think it's like airline training pilot or something like that. Um, or you research these regional, these regional airlines. There's about probably about 10, you know, 10, 15 regional airlines in the U S and they all are partnered with these aviation schools, you know, so you have ATP, uh, United Airlines, they have their own, uh, they have their own uh, aviation school called Aviate. They bought it from Lufthansa over in Germany. And they, 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 right. they made the program is over there. And it's over there. So Aviate and kids can just, hey, I want to sign up. They go apply. They, and if you go and apply to that Aviate program, you're pretty much a United pilot at that point. And you do your training over there. Once you're all said and done, you instruct over there. You join one of their regionals. After the regionals, then you jump on their plane too. So you can just go to one of those, like I said, pilot factories where you are strictly doing the pilot thing. You're getting all your tickets. You'll flight instruct after that. And then you are in the right seat of a CRJ or you're one of those regional jets. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get to where I'm at. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, it, it's it's awesome for people out there to know, like, how many opportunities there really are in this field, how exciting. Absolutely. I mean, after 19 years, for you to have the enthusiasm you have for it is is still pretty, uh, not only contagious, but pretty exciting, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely, I mean, it's, it's one of those jobs where it's not, the same thing will never happen twice. You know, yeah. You'll never do the same route. You'll never go that same way. You'll never meet the same people. You'll never fly with the same exact person. They'll, they'll never be in that same exact mood that you were, that that they were in three weeks ago when you were flying with them. You know, so it'll ne you'll never fly the same type of day twice. Sure, and and so you wouldn't say that anyone specifically necessarily is is more likely to uh, to be prone to succeed at this job. You have all kinds of different personalities. You mentioned people that fly packages, people that like to fly people. Absolutely. Yeah. There, there's so, there's so many, I mean, I fly with probably about maybe five, six different pilots in a month, you know, five, six, and they all have different personalities. You know, some people are talkers, you know, <laughs> Hey, they want to talk your ear off, you know, Hey, yeah, let's talk about my skin color. Let's talk about my, let's talk about my, the cream I'm using right here. You know, it gives me, gives me a nice, <laughs> gives me a nice, um, 
gives me a nice uh, moisturizer. You're like, oh my God, I want to talk about moisturizer. And then you have the other person that just, well, they want to keep to themselves. And that's good too. You respect, you just respect the person that's sitting next to you. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, they're in their ways. You have your ways. And sometimes you guys get along great. Sometimes you're just professional. And then sometimes, obviously, you have the 5%. You're like, I wish I didn't have to work with him again. You know, and, and those things happen too. But but that that's an that's sure. an every that's an in every industry. You know what I mean? So that's any job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you never talk. Yeah, you know, in, in the cockpits, you never. And much like any job, really, you never talk about race. You never talk about politics. You never right. talk about you know personal beliefs and religion things like that. You know, you keep that to everybody else to to have him and holler. Me, I talk about where are we going to eat? Well, how we're, we're flying to over here? You know, is, is Shirley? Are they going to be coming out with us and having a good time over at uh? That Poke Bowl place over in Seattle. That's what I'm worried about. You know what I mean? So that, that's, that's my main concern. Right. Yeah. Right. So, well, hey, man, that's a lot of information, a lot of awesome information. And yeah. uh, I think people, uh, anyone who tuned in is going to be pumped up to to know how many, first of all, how many opportunities there are, how many options there are for them. And then uh, the fact that you're still so, you're still jacked up about it is is really cool, man. I it's appreciate it. Appreciate cool. it. It's a, it's a, yeah. I, I have a. It's, it's a good time. It's a good time. But again, that's me. You know, you might come over here. You might not like it. Who knows? Everybody's like I said. Everybody's got that different personality. But a lot of people like what they do, right? In, in this. Yeah, industry. you met, You know what? Now that now that you touch on that, is there anything specifically that you think would be a something that would be a deal breaker for certain for certain people? I'd say deal breaking. A lot of people have that. It's the it's the fi- it's the financial obligation to. You know, a lot of people ha- they put they put the stops on that. But that's just them thinking. But there's so like I said, there's so many um, being in such demand. There's so many different programs. There's so many different ways to get you from here from you there to here. You know, when I started, I had zero cash. I come from absolutely nothing. I had to do it 100 percent on student loans. And, right. Yeah, and it took me like yourself, like we were talking about earlier. There took you about 10, 10 damn years to pay those student loans off. But, you know, here yeah. I did it. You know, I did it. And I love you love what you do. Um, but and again, deal breakers is a lot of people. If you don't have if you're sitting up there like, oh, man, a lot of people think that uh, if you can't make it work, you know, a lot of people are like, well, what if you have a family? What, what, if, what if you're a fan? I hear this a lot of every job has their ups and downs when it comes to uh, how, how you're handling your family. You know what I mean? So if you're, you have, if you're a good right. spouse, if you're a dedicated spouse, if you're a good father, if you're a good mother, those type of things, you, you make it work for you. I mean, yeah, daddy might be gone for five kids. You know, daddy might be gone for three days, but guess what? Daddy's FaceTiming on every single one of those days when he gets to, when he gets home, you know, daddy's or whenever he's at the hotel, I'm doing a FaceTime or I'm asking about school. I'm there, you know, I'm there. I'm not, I'm not there physically, but I'm there in the picture. Right. Or daddy right. might've gone to, uh, this certain airport to where, or in Vegas, you know, one of my kids is like, dad, are you going, are you going to Vegas again? Cause there's a big gummy bear about this big in the airport that I buy that gummy bear and I bring <laughs> home for them. Like, here you go. That's the gummy bear you want. Right. Yeah. That's the one I want. Yeah. Vegas, that's right? the one. Yeah. 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 So it's things right. like that, you know, it's all about, so, when people think again, it's like family wise. Well, again, it's it's it, it's what works for you. It's, it's how you make this job work for you, like any job. It's how you make it work for you. I don't care if you're outside freaking uh, sweeping, sweeping the streets. You know, I mean, you're out there sweeping the streets. Well, you're gonna make you're gonna make that uh, you're gonna make that job uh, work for you. You know, it's like hey, you might be able to come home to your family every night. You know, I mean, are you gonna are you gonna True. mope by sweeping the street? Or are you gonna put headphones in, listen to your favorite songs, and really sweep that street? You know, what I mean, it's just like it's how you take it. It's, it's really how you take it. You know, so it's in, in the aviation world, the airline industry. It's like. I know I'm going to be gone three days. I know I'm going to be, you know, but daddy will be back and you know, I'll be back and I'll be home for four days. You know what I mean? And, and when I'm home, I get to put you on the school bus. When I'm home, that's four days off that I'm not thinking about work. Right. Four days off that, hey, you got extra days off from school? Guess what? We're going to go jump on a plane for free and we're going to go fly down to Aruba. And guess what? Airline pilots and flight attendants, they have uh, airline deals where you get discounts in these hotels. And you'll spend sometimes next to nothing for these hotels and you'll be able to vacation more with your family. So it's a give and take it's a give and take yeah but that's a that's a good give and take and that's, that's a good rundown for people to understand i mean the fact of yeah you're working three days you're up but then if you got if you afforded full days with your family you can really be there you can really accomplish a lot of a lot of um a lot of good times yes sir sure. yes sir thanks man that this is awesome is there anything else that you'd like to add Hey, man, no, uh, if anybody's interested whatsoever, you know, yeah, talk to you, talk to me, I give them a link type of thing. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's a great world. And, and, and in the airline industry, in the aviation industry, it's not like 
it's not like the pilots get to enjoy it, right? It's like, oh, you're a, the only way you get to enjoy the airline industry is if you're a pilot. But not, not so much. You know, you take the same, a lot of flight attendants, they take the same pride. Rampers, mechanics, the gate agents, the uh, uh, the people cleaning the airplanes. It's really like that. T- it's really just this tight, tight, tight family. You, when, when, once you're in it, you really don't appreciate it until you're actually in it and you kind of feel it, you know. But it's uh, aviation world is certainly a special thing to get into. And if, and if you're here, it's definitely a rewarding job and a rewarding career. Man, thanks so much for the info, brother. Yeah, man, it was great meeting, great talking to you, and uh, good luck. All right, take care, man. All right, thanks everyone for being here. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you next time on yeah. jointhetrades.com.